All right, so today I want to show you a list of common ball python combos. Combos that consist of more than one gene that have kind of a slang name associated with them. For example, if you had a pastel and a pinstripe in the same snake, we call that a lemon blast. As a matter of fact, I had someone leave a comment under one of my videos that said, hey, can you make a video about all the different slang names for all the ball python combos? And I actually stumbled on a list. There's actually over a hundred different combos, but I can show you the list and it actually goes through and breaks down all the individual genes. And I want to just pick a few from that list, probably some of the more common ones that you'll see at local reptile shows. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on morphmarket.com, and this is the homepage on Morph Market. And to get to the list of combos, essentially what you want to do is you want to scroll down until you hit all these categories, and then you want to click on ball pythons. And when you click on ball pythons, that'll bring you over to this page. You may have been at this page over here on Morph Market. This is all the individual genes of ball pythons. Look at how many genes there are, and that is why ball pythons are so popular because you can take multiple genes and mix them together the combinations are almost unlimited it's pretty amazing these are just the single genes not the combos and essentially to get to the combos you want to click on this button right here this is called trait combos I didn't even know this existed until I clicked on it today and this is where it brings you it's pretty awesome this is all the combos and the slang of the combos essentially that consist of more than one gene in ball pythons and look at all these different ones obviously I can't cover all these in one video. It's pretty amazing, all the different ones. And some of these, I'd say it's it's a little bit difficult because some of them consist of three or four genes in some cases. Not really popular common names for some of these. Some of them I actually haven't even heard of, but I'm just going to pick out some of the more common ones that you'll probably see at reptile shows. So the first one I want to cover, this is the Superfly, pretty awesome snake. And the Superfly is actually a super pastel and a fire. And when it comes to combos, if you actually mix in pastel and fire, essentially what happens is the pastel brings in the yellow color and then the fire really cleans it up, makes for some really impressive combos. And this particular snake actually has two copies of the pastel gene, which it's, it's kind of an interesting combo with two copies of pastel, because what it really does is is it really kind of brings in some of this lighter background. The Super Pastel sometimes has kind of like lighter saddles on the snake. You can't really see them in this example here. And the Super Pastel also brings in, usually it fades the top of the head out a little bit, and then the fire really cleans it up and increases the contrast of the snake. Makes for a really impressive combo. Here's another one that's pretty interesting. This is what is called the calendar. As a matter of fact, I went to a reptile show just a few months ago and the guy had a whole bunch of calendars. I was thinking, you know, you probably should actually split up the genes because a lot of people probably don't know what a calendar is. And as a matter of fact, you know, there's some people that have been breeding ball pythons for 10 or 20 years and they just kind of expect everyone to know kind of the common names like calendar. And essentially what this is, it's a spider with the calico gene in it. And I'd say this is kind of a tricky combo because the, the spider gene just by itself usually has quite a bit of white coming up the sides. As a matter of fact, I've seen some, some spiders with about you know this much white coming up. And the, the, it's kind of interesting. The spiders are really variable where you can have a high amount of white and a low amount of white. And the calico lines are also really variable where you can have different amounts of white. And you mix the two together and I've seen some calendars that have just a little bit of color right down the top of the spine and I've seen some that you, you kind of question is there actually calico in that spider it's kind of an interesting combo Here's another one that's really awesome. This is the freeway, and the freeway is one of the kind of the unique no anomalies. It actually consists of the asphalt and the yellow belly. And as a matter of fact, if you actually took an asphalt and a yellow belly and a normal and lined them all up, you probably almost couldn't tell the difference between them. It's a really super subtle morph. And for some reason, I don't know what it is, but if you actually take the asphalt, you breed it with the yellow belly, you get this incredible animal like I've never seen before. It's pretty awesome. 
As a matter of fact, if you really want your freeways to pop, you can actually add pastel to the mix that really makes it just, the colors really explode, really brings in a lot of yellow and kind of more of a whiter background. Sometimes it's almost like an electricity pattern all through the snake. It's pretty awesome with the addition of pastel. And keep in mind, the freeways are also allelic. So if you actually took this and you bred it to a normal, half the offspring would come out yellow belly, half the offspring would come out asphalt, and you would get no normals. Pretty powerful breeder. Here's another one that's pretty interesting. This is the Jigsaw. The Jigsaw is actually the Mojave and the Pinstripe in the same combo. And I'd say at first glance, you probably look at this and say, yep, that is kind of a Pinstripe. Almost has the same pattern as a Pinstripe, but you can tell it kind of lost some of the color on the side. Usually Pinstripes are really bright gold and the Mojave really takes out the gold and kind of, usually kind of jumbles up the stripe right down the top like someone kind of cut it out with a jigsaw and wasn't really accurate. I think that's where it gets its name from. Pretty awesome combo. Here's another one. This is what we, we call the nuclear. Nuclear, I'd say nuclear by itself is pretty unusual. Usually we say it's a nuclear pinstripe or a nuclear clown. It's kind of the building block for other combinations. The nuclear is actually, if you look at the genes over here, it's actually the butter and the fire. And keep in mind, the butter is pretty much the same thing as the lesser, just a different line. It's in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So if you actually take two butters or two lessers breed them together you actually get an all white snake with blue eyes this is really awesome so a lot of times you'll actually hear nuclear something else and it's, it's, it's a part of the combo that consists of butter and fire Here's another one that's pretty awesome. This is the Soul Sucker, and it's one of the early morphs that, that came out really early. It's kind of an interesting combo because the Soul Sucker is actually, technically, the first Soul Sucker was three genes. It actually is the Granite, the Hidden Gene Woma, and the Lesser. And I actually I actually did a video on the, on the Soul Sucker, did a little kind of a morph presentation just on the Soul Sucker, and I presented it as these three genes, and a lot of people kind of chimed in and said, hey, you know, you can actually make a soul sucker without the granite a lot of people will make hidden gene woma lessers and call them soul suckers and the granite essentially what that does is it kind of gives you a little bit of pixelation in the sides of the snake and i think a lot of people throw the granite in there because you know the first original soul suckers actually had granite in there although i don't think you necessarily need it to produce a soul sucker and it's also i should also mention too that it's an allelic combination as well so you actually produce half lessers and half hidden gene womas when you're breeding it to something else. Here is a Spinner Blast. The Spinner Blast is pretty awesome. As a matter of fact, it's probably one of my favorite snakes. It's it's really, you can definitely, you can almost see the genes in there if you look really hard at it. Essentially what it is, it's a pastel and a pinstripe and a spider. And keep in mind the pastel and the pinstripe we call a Lemon Blast. And then you add the spider on top of the Lemon Blast. I think that's where they get the Spinner Blast from the spider and the Lemon Blast kind of combined into one name. Makes for a really impressive impressive combo. Here's another one that you've probably seen before. This is actually a mimosa. And at first glance, you probably would recognize this. This actually is a champagne. And the champagne's kind of interesting. It's really a variable morph. Sometimes as the base morph, champagnes can have no pattern at all. And sometimes they can have kind of a, kind of like the striped and spotted pattern. And usually when you mix champagne with other combos, a lot of times you lose all the pattern and you'll get kind of a washed out snake that's a slightly different color. And it's kind of interesting, this is actually the champagne with the ghost. The ghost is a recessive combination, so it's a recessive morph, so you actually need two copies of the ghost and one copy of the champagne. Kind of hard to hit. It's technically a three gene combo. Pretty awesome. It is the mimosa. Here's another one. This is actually, the, the slang for this one's actually called a Batman. <laughs> the Batman's kind of a newer development. This is actually the combination of the spot nose, the leopard, and the clown. And when you mix all three together, you get this amazing snake. As a matter of fact, when the, these first came out and they were named and they kind of were, you know, showed off and displayed, everybody wanted a Batman. And it's kind of interesting how the prices really skyrocketed as soon as they came out. Take a look at this one. This one actually sold in 2019 for three 
$3,000. The prices for Batmans are really holding strong. Pretty awesome. And it's pretty cool in the clown combos. You mix clown with almost anything and you get these really crazy head patterns. As a matter of fact, I saw someone who's doing a morph video on the head patterns of the snake. You can actually tell what genes were in the clown by the pattern on the head. I thought that was pretty interesting. Here's another really awesome combo. This is this is actually called a black pewter. This is a black pastel plus a pastel. It's kind of interesting. They both have pastel in the name, but you actually mix them together and you get this almost metallic looking snake. Looks really awesome. I've actually produced a few metallic looking snakes. I actually had a lemon blast bamboo that I, you know, it almost looked exactly like it was made of metal when it was a hatchling. Kind of the same with this. And this is a really dark combo. The black pastel is dark and then you add the pastel on top of it makes this really silvery color snake really awesome Here's another one. This is uh, Bumblebee. I'd say, you know, the, early on in the ball python industry, I'd say the pides really kick-started everything when the pides came out. You know, the, the snake with the splotches of white, it was actually recessive. And then right on the heels of the pied was the bumblebees. And people were just like totally amazed at the bumblebee that anything could even look as amazing as something like this. This is, this is actually a spider with pastel on top of it. Probably one of the most impressive 2G combos that you can get really awesome looking and bumblebees used to sell for a lot of money and this one take a look at this one this one was actually sold in 2018 for $90 you know it's paying more for shipping and then, then when they first came out I think they were selling for like $20,000 or something crazy like that it's pretty amazing the price jump on some of these ball pythons Here's another one. You've probably heard this name before. This is the Mystic Potion. Kind of an interesting combo. And the Mystic Potion is actually the Mojave and the Mystic. It's kind of an interesting combo because both of these are actually in the blue-eyed leucista complex. And usually the Mojave will produce a lot more white snakes when you're breeding it with other genes in the blue-eyed leucista complex. And I'd say the Mystic is kind of an exception. A lot of times you can actually get non-white snakes when you're breeding something with Mystic, and that is the same with this. This is also an allelic combination, so if you breed this to something, half the offspring are Mojave, half the offspring contain Mystic. Here's another one. This is the Pastavi. Really awesome snake. This is probably, you know, this is like two of the base genes of ball pythons. The Pastavi is actually the Pastel and the Mojave. And it really, the Mojave really kind of reduces the side patterns. It reduces the alien head, like the Roswell gray alien head patterns into these little keyholes. Almost like you could put a skeleton key right in the side of the snake. And then the Pastel just really brings out a lot of the bright yellow. Makes for a really awesome awesome snake. Here's another one. This is a snow, and you've probably heard snow before too if you're into ball pythons. A snow is actually uh, an albino and an axanthic in the same snake. It's kind of interesting. You know, we're always talking about blue eyed leucistics, the white snake with the blue eyes. This is actually a white snake with red eyes, the snow. And a lot of times, what they'll do is they'll actually, in front of the snow, they'll actually put the specific line of axanthic because there's multiple lines of axanthic. This one happens to be the VPI line of a xanthic with an albino the vpi snow pretty awesome combo Here's another one. This is the Super Stripe, and it's kind of interesting on this one, too, because both of the genes are pretty subtle by themselves. Both the Spectre and the Yellow Belly, not really that impressive as a standalone morph, and then when you mix them together, you get a really amazing combo, the Super Stripe. This is also an allelic combination, and some of these Super Stripes are, it's a little bit variable if you're looking at the different Super Stripes, and they seem to brown out a little bit as they age, but when they're hatchlings, they are absolutely stunning. Here's another one. This is what we call the Dreamsicle. The Dreamsicle is actually an albino pied, but it's the certain line of albino. It is the lavender albino with the pied, so we call it the Dreamsicle. So it's kind of interesting. The lavender albino and the pied are both recessive genes, and it's a little bit difficult to hit. So if you actually take you know this and breed it to something else, you get normal looking snakes that are het for lavender albino and het for pied, and you have to actually breed two of those 
double heads together and your odds aren't very good for actually hitting the dreamsicles and the dreamsicles have pretty pretty much over the last five years have been kind of hovering right around two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars per snake they haven't come down hardly at all in the last five years it's a pretty awesome combo Here's another one. This is what we call the gray matter. And when it comes to the champagne, I'd say the, the pretty much, the, you know, the probably the best thing you can do with a champagne is to make the gray matter. And the gray matter almost looks like it has pied in it because it has these patches of white. And it's kind of interesting. It almost looks like the pied with like a metallic silver color on it. Kind of a really weird, unique anomaly that you wouldn't expect. As a matter of fact, this doesn't have pied in it. This is actually a champagne with the super cinnamon really unexpected result mixing these two jeans together this one actually is it's actually sold for 1500 these have been around for a long time and i think you know there's uh, the, the, I think there's issues with both of these jeans. Sometimes the champagne can have a, you know can kind of tend to have some head wobbles. The super cinnamon can actually have a little duck billing, kind of a flattened out mouth. But I'd say in most cases you actually you know produce these. And I think just because of some of the defects or the possibility of the defects with both of these jeans, that's why a lot of people aren't really into the project. And it's, it's kind of interesting. It almost helps the price to be not so popular because if a lot of people you know really wanted to jump into this the price would really be depressed and because a lot of people aren't into it the price is just really kind of maintaining this really hasn't dropped in price either over the last five years so I'm going to leave you with this last one. This is what we call a lightning pied, and it's actually slang for uh, an exanthic pied. And it's kind of interesting. Most people will actually put the line of axanthic over here, similar with like, kind of like the, the line of the snow with the axanthic. This is uh, this is actually an MJ axanthic. There's several lines. There's the TSK axanthic, the MJ, the Jolif, and the VPI. Quite a few lines of axanthic. And you really, what you want to do is you want to specify which line of azantha because a lot of them are not compatible i mean the last thing you want to do is actually take a lightning pipe from one version of azantha and cross it with another line of azantha and get all pied looking double head for both lines of azantha that would be a nightmare especially if you bred the heads together and you wouldn't know which line you were and you get really confused between what you're doing so you really want to track the lines of azantha when you specially when you specify you know what is in your lightning pies all right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Magnus Buch asks, should I get a male or a female ball python? And that is a very good question. I'd say it really depends on what you're doing with your ball python. So if you're getting a snake as a pet, it doesn't really matter if it's a male or a female. Although I've heard some people argue that females get a little bit bigger, but I would tend to disagree with that statement. I think as breeders, what we tend to do is feed our females a little bit more because we want the females to be bigger so we can get more eggs. But I would say if you take a look at Bobby here, <laughs> Neck. This is actually my bamboo ball python. Bobby is a male and he's about seven years old. Look at how big Bobby is. He's a really big ball python. As a matter of fact, I brought this snake to a reptile show and everyone that picked it up was like, wow, a male that big? They just couldn't believe it. And it's because I pretty much fed Bobby pretty heavy when he was small, pretty much as much as I fed my females. And now that he's an adult, you know, he's about seven years old, I really don't feed him. I, I'd say I feed him a small rodent maybe every other week. He doesn't really need that much because he doesn't really have a high metabolism. But let me tell you, males can get pretty big too. And if you're actually breeding ball pythons, I'd say you probably want to start with females because keep in mind, it actually takes three years for females to develop before you can actually breed them. So I'd probably buy maybe multiple lower end females to start with and then sit on them for about three years and then invest more money in maybe a higher end male and you can actually take a high end male and breed it to multiple females kind of get that high end male you know working more for you as far as a better bang for your buck you can kind of do it that way and then when I first started into ball pythons it's kind of interesting because I was buying one male and one female thinking I had to breed just one male to one female you can actually breed a male to multiple females and at first after I realized you could actually breed it to multiple 
females, I was kind of regretting my decision to buy one male and one female. But another thing you have to keep in mind is you don't breed all the snakes every single year. So if you have multiple males, a lot of times it's almost like uh, you're a painter and you have a whole palette of all these colors to choose from. So one year you can breed your bamboo male and the next year you can breed a different type of male and kind of keep rotating all the males and that way you're not producing the same snakes year after year. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.